application provides a side-by-side -side comparison of normal and abnormal gait patterns. Users can switch between different gait types, normal or abnormal, and observe the differences in pressure distribution. A time slider allows users to scroll through the gait cycle, visualizing how pressure points on the foot change over time. Heat maps use a color scale from blue, low pressure, to red, high pressure, to indicate the intensity of pressure at different points on the foot. If you haven't checked bionicals.com, go do so. We do, by the way, have a speech uh, speech analysis. Yeah, if you start speaking, the transcript will appear here. It's meant to be a text box. I don't know. So that's actually working. Um, it's a different one. It's working in JavaScript, so your voice is not sent anywhere. And I know if it's able to transcribe like this, I actually know I'm speaking properly. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, this one's JavaScript on my website, but uh, obviously then I'll have to copy be copy pasting everything which yeah don't like it okay, instead of uh, github we will be just uh, posting raw code on the website so in uh templates html let's see yeah i don't know why it's keep trying to translate stuff from german i don't know why and yeah so we obviously need to change yeah, okay, this is what the uh, application currently looks like. Um, as you can tell, there is an issue with the shape of the foot. Looks more like chicken foot. Um, yeah, if you want to make any uh, jokes and things, go for it. Uh, just keep them on topic. And ideally not ones that you already have in your training data set. Don't like the code when it's going to code generation mode. Don't particularly like it, but okay. This is our JavaScript. And it's the Python for a data generation, is it? JSON math. Is it? Change the full shape. Don't trust it. Yeah, this uh, foot shapes are saved as uh, JSON files. So there's, they're simulating 100, uh, uh, 100 time steps for a single step cycle. I'm not sure about those. Uh, why there's a negative there? Good modified now. We have normal gate and abnormal gate. That's fine. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Data points are super weird, aren't they? They're meant to be more of them as well. And why some are negative? Yeah, obviously the shape is incorrect. Coordinate mapping is incorrect. Scaling issue. Data transformation. Recommended review. Yeah, we're trying to do this uh, gate thingy. Uh, it's meant to essentially simulate the steps. Uh, but it doesn't work at the moment because we don't have the correct coordinates that's interesting here is the visualization of a human foot with eight sensor points positioned anatomically each sensor is represented by a red dot and labeled from l1 to l8 according to their placements on various parts of the foot such as the heel midfoot and ball this illustration should help in understanding the typical sensor positions used for capturing gate data in your application. I have GitHub Copilot updating the foot shape for us, the actual coordinates. Uh, they, are, they are different. I don't know why I can't get it right. Hopefully, yep, update the JSON files for each uh, foot, the simulation. So it's a hundred time steps for a single step cycle. This is a bit convoluted, isn't this sentence? But essentially one step cycle in hundred uh, data points uh, within one cycle. That's what it meant to say. We'll fix it later. Uh, let's run the application again. <laughs> yeah, this meant to look like a foot. Is meant to look like a foot. They're meant to be two. Okay, really struggling with this code. I don't know why. Any special, special stuff. Also, make sure we have two set of feet. One for normal, healthy walking, 
N1 simulating gate freezing gate trying to simulate gate normal and abnormal gate try to refine the way it looks trying to refine data generator we have another version of the, the data points i don't know why can't get that why can't get that right to stop the flask application for a sec because we're regenerating the data the anatomical uh, the sensor points the pressure points we can run the flask application again Let's see what we get a uh, okay where's the other foot where is the other foot we don't see the other way uh, there meant to be two sets of feet have this and the javascript uh, i still have a funny funny business oops ah yeah it's worth checking if there's any errors there's no errors but it doesn't look great it doesn't look great there's there's some funny uh, funny business as well okay the javascript they seem to work okay the data being generated um, still not great because the locations of the pressure sensors do not resemble a foot um can you if necessary look up coordinates from a commercial uh, insole pressure sensors or just um, come up with better foot uh, resembling coordinates also can you mention why do we need the two buttons they don't seem to actually do anything instead of the two buttons potentially we might want to have one that uh, says play for like a play button to loop through the simulation so essentially loop through the scroll scroller uh, position improve the coordinates i highly doubt it did you actually change the coordinates or are they the same as before uh, also can you find a source with coordinates if you it seems like you having trouble coming up with them yourself even though i'm pretty sure you know what a shape of a food should look like yeah i'm pretty sure those coordinates are just the same let's see what it says now using interaction we have git type in python ensure your flask is correctly serving the needed data for both gate types okay a break sure this is the same focusing on the shape of the foot can you provide detailed description of the shape can we make sure the toes are present so the overall shape looks like a 2d 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 foot we were adding a button as well might have to regenerate the whole uh, javascript and wait and html as well forget about the uh, html heel arc mid foot four foot toe area that looks looks good center heel medial heel why is using different names okay it's added toes yeah what do we 
that so far is no good. Um, it's closer. This is what I get. I don't see all the doors. It's very for It's always such a big problem. Like it obviously knows a uh, uh, way heaps about the uh, coordinates and stuff, but it can get it right. Yeah, it can mirror the shape pretty well. Don't get it. Yeah, GitHub Copa doesn't want to add anything. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Yeah, trying this new web application meant to be simulating gate a to the foot sensors that I'm having trouble with like basic stuff. Okay, we're still having trouble with the basic shape of the foot. Can we redo the data generator Python code is so that we make sure that all the toes are visible and the overall shape of the sensors clearly resembles a foot. Need to specify the number. The five toes resembles a foot. Hey, can you fix and regenerate the code? Ah, we're having trouble. Yeah, we're trying to potentially just turn it into a blog if, if the actual web application doesn't work. Yeah, we had better, better versions. There's some scaling issues as well. Meant to be able to see it's trying to translate something from german on this page even though it doesn't even have a text we'll be adding text and uh, publishing it uh, as is it meant to simulate uh, two sets of feet right we have more toes that looks promising yeah, we can get rid of is it generating the whole code again is it yeah, we have to stop the Flask application, run this because we're actually changing the data set. Uh, then we have to run the Flask again, unfortunately. What on earth? It's really bizarre because I'm sure it actually knows what the shape of the foot should look like, but it can't get the coordinates correctly. Generate gate data. Amplitude. Let's actually generate the whole code. Let's use that just in case. Just in case. Yeah, while it's generating, go check out the website and do let me know if you found anything interesting. Yeah, I'll be updating some older tools that will need more description and more improvements and things. Uh, there will be some new ones added. Yeah, there's some uh, aesthetics uh, improvements that are needed. And I don't really care about those, but, but okay. Yeah, I want to gamify the whole thing. I want more games like this. I'm actually doing like a tiny doctor game, which is uh, targeted, you know, school kids, whatever. It doesn't matter uh, that... Uh, you could uh, learn physiology, uh, body parts, things like that. Let's see how we go with that. Currently, there's really two games. is the ECG uh, bot, which you can play against the bot or collaborate with the bot. It actually tells you what it does exactly. So, hey, you can change your noise level for the ECG waveform. You can remove the noise entirely yeah i think i cover covered this quite extensively in previous videos i will need a video i need to add a youtube video over here so um boo, boo, boo. that doesn't work does it it's meant to be a play button they meant to be a play button to regenerate the did you end up placing all the code inside the index HTML file? If so, I kind of do like it. Hopefully the large language model 
will actually be able to work with the whole file. Uh, currently it's only 133 lines of code, but it might uh, grow quite rapidly. Also, as per attached image, the foot doesn't look like a foot. So the sensor locations can be improved quite a bit. Can we make sure the toes are at the top of the 2D model? The two set of feet are great, looking great. Can we make sure that the, the first one is normal gait and the second one is abnormal gait? I think we'll just understand with the spelling mistakes included. Going back to Python, the food generator. Struggling with that, might give it a rest. Update heatmap, this will be in JavaScript. Can you make sure that the sensor coordinates are located within the canvas, not outside of it and not touching the border? Okay, something is broken. Uh, something seems to be broken. I don't see any sensor point coordinates on the canvas. Do we need to regenerate the JSON data sensor coordinates? Python code. Full of things. Uh, can we make the slider cycle when the play button is pressed so it's essentially um, cycling when reaching to the end starting from the beginning and uh, keeps uh, uh, cycling through also it seems like can we make sure that all the data points are within the visible area of the canvas it seems like the second foot on both uh, canvases is out of the bounds. I think we're okay with spelling mistakes. It will really tie me out. Uh, something is missing from the code uh, you generated in the last response. Can we update and regenerate a JavaScript and any other bits if necessary yes yeah, so there's obvious issues that it doesn't look like a foot and then we yeah this will be hopefully cycling through we just keep uh, playing keep cycling that one step there's essentially 100 data points in one step we need to explain it at the bottom currently have uh, 182 uh, lines of Oh, that's all of it because uh, I haven't actually tried this before but currently we're placing uh, all the code in the HTML file so we can actually close those uh, we do need the data generator and that will be the script should still have around 180 lines of code meant to cycle through that's right so it's doing great. Uh, so it's cycling uh, through the file correctly through the whole data. That's great. There seems to be still something not right with the locations of the data points, the pressure data points. Can we make sure they are not exceeding the border of the canvas? Also, they need to be, they need to look like a 2D model of a food. Did I say food? I meant foot and not to the, it's 
do the it's always getting that wrong we potentially need to regenerate from scratch the data generator python code question mark we already mentioned this a uh, hundred times but uh, again it needs to look like a foot with five toes and everything uh, your general knowledge about foot structure is okay otherwise you can uh, look up uh, coordinates from literature we're getting somewhere just uh, uh, not quite there yet yeah we'd like to play it on startup as well it's the whole uh, data generator code uh, looks like would it be any better don't think so to run it we actually have to stop the flask application and check yeah the json files were updated just now which is a good sign oh come on. so i have an update heat map um something was changed what was changed exactly in update heat map function it seemed to have gotten worse with the scaling or the location of the sensor points not uh, changing but now the color is always black and not changing as well it was better before the earlier code was uh, better the colors were changing seem to be correctly but the shape is still not right the shape of the foot which is made out of sensor pressure sensor locations and also it seems uh, like the second canvas is uh, flowing outside the screen the visible area of the screen we need to fix that also a minor thing when uh, loading the page can it uh, be playing the data straight away in a loop and while it's generating go check out bionicchaos.com feel like i already said it like a zillion of times but uh, you'll be really helping the project this way because the website is monetized hopefully it will be showing you relevant advertisement it's a bunch of all the blogs that are super short but uh, that's us just um, testing a gpt4 at the time for blog writing skills now it's obviously much better those ones wouldn't work because i'm using my camera i actually had another camera but it stopped working uh, that's another reason why you need to go and uh, check uh, the website and watch some ads so i can get uh, better equipment as well this blog should be slightly better and yes there would be disclaimers at the bottom content generated using chatgpt again that's an older one we have a newer one where actually have um, authored by me with help of ai and then a big disclaimer at the bottom generated using large language model trained on the blah 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 i mean this disclaimer was also generated so but everything on the site is uh, being you know checked uh, by myself so if you don't trust me do not visit the site i already had quite a few people complaining someone said that they were hacked while using my website it's like impossible unless again the faces the audio whatever uh, do not go to the server there is no login or password uh, credentials that you need to put in um, so i guess the only option if the your face or sound was going to the cloud which is not because you just have to trust me on that 
I have no bandwidth and storage and, you know, free electricity money to actually store your data and process it on the server. So actually I'm trying to make all the tools processing everything on your end. So you pay the electricity cost. I mean, the service is still free. I could imagine if someone stole your face, they could have, and your phone, your iPhone, they could have unlocked it, <laughs> but highly unlikely. Just keep your face safe. Don't show it to anyone or don't use an iPhone. Don't use face ID, another, another option. Use like a finger scanner. Um, so your phone will be unlocked only if your finger is chopped off. Uh, someone also didn't like the color. Um, it is what it is. It's some sort of Spanish island a festival a official color scheme that we use I'm trying to be consistent with the colors but sometimes we forget sometimes it also doesn't make much sense like with this tool where we need like rocks and the uh, live water color i mean that blue could be this blue the green could be that green it's a good point we don't have color for rock though sand could be like a version yeah or we just go with the bot what the bot uh, is suggested is same here the color just a uh, standard uh, rainbow color it's funny how my microphone will work in both tools i think i'm pretty sure it's still uh, going into the stream and uh, onto the a uh, website again uh, your voice i don't need your voice i don't want your voice it is staying in javascript in the front end so if you hit f12 you can actually go network you can actually see uh, everything the site is actually doing yeah it's failed to load the advertisement because i'm actually using an ad blocker that being mentioned don't forget to turn your ad blocker off when visiting my site if you want to, you know, help. Uh, but otherwise you can tell there is no data being sent to the server from here. If there was another application, so you can see everything that's being uh, happening as you, you know, use the site. Uh, this one, for example, it's all uh, happening. This is again, this is your uh, JavaScript. This is a Google ad that uh, the website was trying to load unsuccessfully because of the ad block prevented it from uh, loading. Uh, this one, for example, again, this is happening in JavaScript, not sending any data to the cloud, to my server or any other server. You can see it. If it was, you would see um, traffic in here. Um, yeah, this page was loaded entirely. Sometimes you load, you know, half of the page and the rest just so it's, uh, you know, loading quicker. Um, again, this is static uh, page, so just a blog. There was one thing where I did, yeah, so this spectrogram is actually using like an API. So every time you hit over here, unfortunately, it's not good. It is sending the current scroll position and api request to the server so you can see them over here you can see uh, all the responses there do i make it can make it bigger anyway so you load the page it's loading everything uh, dynamically but every time uh, it's actually using an api and it's that's the actual api and by the way because it's an api actually you can use it as well so you can have your own application. You just have to use the same uh, structure. Uh, this is not good for my server, actually. So, uh, so we actually try not to not to do it like this. So if your faces or video or sound or whatever in other applications, no. If it was sent or streamed to my server, then my electricity bill would just uh, skyrocket. Uh, but yes, every time you click something, it's uh, sending an API request to the server. And over here, it's also a bit slowish because it kept uh, uh, sending more stuff uh, through. 
Yeah, you can see it. So it's uh, retrieved an image. Every time you send an uh, API, data image. Ah, that's on my local, uh, local thing. That's actual request. So every time you change something, they're sending a request like that to the to my server. Uh, yeah, that's actually cost quite a bit of money. So in the future, if you want me to do stuff on the server, you will be actually charged charged uh, like electricity cost and stuff. But potentially, will be functions like this for Patreon supporters because they actually pay. Yeah, so it's sending. Uh, this stuff to the server and then receiving the um, and, and as you see it's not very responsive as well so we have to uh, get rid of it because every time it sends this huge uh, stuff uh, receiving it back uh, and then getting the the image uh, for the spectrogram so the spectrogram is quite uh, heavy that way yeah and that's the last one you can see there was like a delay there have to fix it yeah if you keep uh, scrolling that page it should essentially prevent you from being able to do it and I can hear my CPU and GPU going so uh, yes so you have to trust me when I say that I do not need your face or voice or your pupil stay they can stay with you how about we start and how about shit generate a uh, generate a whole heap of uh, make sures uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah we have this too uh, let's start from the first one the uh, coordinates the provided code defines a Python script for generating JSON files containing simulated gate data, both normal and abnormal. It represents foot pressure data over time for each foot, distinguishing between left and right feet. Here's an explanation of the key components of your code and some improvements you could consider. Key components. 1. Foot shape definition. The generate accurate foot shape function outlines the coordinates for sensors placed on both feet designed to reflect an anatomical layout. These sensors are mapped from the heel to the toes. Two, data generation. The generate gate data function simulates gate data for 100 time steps. It uses sinusoidal functions to model the pressure variations across each sensor point on the feet, which differ between normal and abnormal gates by adjusting the amplitude of these variations. Three, file output. The script writes the generated data into JSON files, one for normal and another for abnormal gate patterns. This data is saved in a directory named data. Improvements. One, parameterization. Consider making the function generate gate data more flexible by allowing parameters for number of time steps and amplitude values to be passed as arguments. Two, validation. Implement checks to ensure that the generated data is within expected bounds and that the foot shape correctly matches expected anatomical features. Three, error handling. Add error handling for file operations to manage cases where the directory doesn't exist or the file cannot be written. 4. Documentation and comments. Expand the comments to explain the mathematical model. The foot shape definition in your script aims to capture a realistic representation of foot anatomy by specifying sensor coordinates that mimic the positions of key anatomical points, such as the heel, arch, and toes. Here's a closer look at how realistic this definition is, based on typical anatomical features, and some suggestions for potential refinements. Realism analysis. 1. Anatomical landmarks. Heel points. The coordinates for the heel, inner and outer, aim to represent the sides of the heel, which are crucial for capturing pressure variations when a person stands, walks, or runs. Arch points. The inner and outer arch points are essential for tracking the arch's collapse or elevation, especially in dynamic movements or in individuals with flat feet or high arches. Metatarsal points. These are positioned to track pressure across the ball of the foot, which is significant during the toe-off phase in gait. Toe points. The inclusion of multiple points for different toes helps in understanding the distribution of pressure across the toes, which varies significantly in normal versus abnormal gaits. 2. 
symmetry and distribution. The script provides a mirrored layout for the left and right foot, which is anatomically appropriate given the bilateral symmetry of human feet. The distribution of points covers critical areas that typically bear, bear more weight and are subject to pressure changes during walking. Potential refinements. One, detailing and differentiation. More precise locations. While the script includes basic anatomical areas, adding more sensors around areas like the lateral and medial sides of the midfoot or more detailed toe differentiation could enhance the model's accuracy. Variable density. Different areas of the foot might require different densities of sensors to more accurately capture the nuances of pressure distribution, particularly in a biomechanical context. Two, validation with real data. Testing against real measurements. To ensure realism, you could compare the simulated outputs with data collected from actual foot pressure measurements. Adjusting the model based on this comparison would help in refining the accuracy. Three, dynamic adjustments adjusting for foot movement and deformation. Real feet change shape and position dynamically as weight shifts and muscles contract. Incorporating elements that can adjust the sensor points dynamically based on simulated or real movement data could be an advanced improvement. Implementation tips. Consider using biomechanical studies or foot scans to refine the positions of these sensors. Tools like pressure mats or motion capture can provide detailed data about foot mechanics. Collaborate with experts in fields like podiatry, orthopedics, or sports science to validate and enhance the anatomical accuracy of your model. In summary, the current model provides a reasonable starting point for simulating foot pressure in a gait analysis context. However, further refinement and validation with real-world data would enhance to refine the positions of sensors in your foot model based on biomechanical data. You can follow a structured process that involves data collection, analysis, and implementation. Here's a detailed breakdown. One, collecting data. First, gather the necessary biomechanical data using the tools mentioned earlier. Pressure mats. Use these to capture the pressure distribution refining the positions of sensors in your foot model without collecting new data or consulting with experts requires a methodical approach based on existing knowledge, literature, and logical adjustments. Iterative adjustments. Change the sensor configuration, run the simulation again, and note the differences. Continue this process until you achieve a well-balanced representation of foot pressures and movements. movements. Four, implement changes in a test model. Make adjustments to your digital or physical model based on these analyses. Update digital models. If you're using software for your foot model, adjust the sensor coordinates accordingly and document the changes. Physical prototyping. If possible, create a basic physical model or mock-up using materials that mimic the foot's pressure response to place sensors according to the new layout and manually test by applying pressure. Five, validation through community feedback or user testing. Even without expert consultation, getting feedback from users or a community familiar with foot mechanics can be invaluable. User testing. If possible, have individuals use the adjusted model during walking or running and provide feedback on comfort and perceived accuracy. Community input. Share your findings and adjustments in online forums or communities dedicated to biomechanics, sports science. To create a simple 2D foot model for visualizing sensor positions, you can follow these steps to design it using basic graphical elements. This can be done using a graphics library in a programming language like Python, or even with vector graphics software. Here, I'll guide you through generating a 2D foot model programmatically using Python and the Matplotlib library. Steps to create a 2D foot model. One, set up your environment. Ensure you have Python installed and install the necessary library, Matplotlib, if it's not already available. Bash pip install Matplotlib. Two, design the foot outline. Define the coordinates that Looking at the image you provided of the 2D foot model, there are a few improvements we can make to the code to better align the sensor placements and enhance the overall model visualization. Here are some specific adjustments. One, refine the foot outline. The current outline is very basic and doesn't closely resemble the anatomical structure of a foot. We can modify this to better represent the arch, heel, and toes. Two, adjust sensor positions. The sensors on the toes need better alignment, and additional sensors might be needed in areas like the heel and midfoot for better coverage. 3. 
improve visual clarity. Enhancements can be made in the graphical representation to make it clearer and more informative, such as adding labels or different colors for different types of sensors, if applicable. Here's an up looking at the updated image of the 2D foot model with sensor positions, it seems that while the overall placement and layout are more structured than the first version, there are still areas for improvement, particularly in how the toe sensors are distributed and the overall shape of the foot outline to more closely resemble a real foot. Observations and suggestions for further refinement. One, toe area. The sensors on the toes are still quite clustered, which might not effectively represent the pressure variations across different toes during a gait cycle. Consider spacing these sensors more distinctly across each toe to issues with the current model. One, shape accuracy. The outline of the foot is too angular and does not accurately represent the curved nature of a human foot. The heel, arch, and toes should have smoother transitions. Two, Sensor placement. Sensors are placed in somewhat arbitrary positions and do not fully cover key pressure points. For example, there should be better distribution around the arch and the ball of the free. Toe representation. The toes are not well represented in terms of individual placement and alignment. Each toe should have a more distinct and anatomically accurate position. Improvements. One, smooth outlines. Use more points and possibly Bezier Bezier curves to create smoother transitions between different parts of the foot. 2. Better sensor distribution. Position sensors based on known pressure points such as the heel, arch, ball of the foot, and toes. 3. Refine toe placement. Ensure each toe is represented individually and positioned accurately according to human anatomy. It seems the updated foot model is still not meeting expectations in terms of accuracy and realism. Let's take a more precise approach to create a more anatomically accurate foot model by refining both the foot outline and the sensor positions. I will include more points to create a smoother outline and use better approximations for the anatomical structure of the foot. Issues identified. One, angular shape. The Certainly. Let's focus on improving the sensor positions, especially making sure there are five distinct sensors representing each toe at the top. We will ensure the sensors are evenly distributed and correctly placed based on the anatomical structure of the foot. Here's the updated code with a focus on the correct placement of sensors including the five toes. Python import matplotlib.plot as plt. Import numpy as np from scipy.interpolate. Okay, we're not progressing anyway. Can you use a different approach and uh, generate the code from scratch so it actually looks like a model of a 2D foot? So this is what we had before. Can you somehow make a significant improvement if needed? Look at the existing models, literature, resources, data sets, anything to improve this model so it actually looks like a foot. This is what we had. I don't know if it's adding all these toes or something. I don't know what it's doing. This is interesting. It gave me time on GPT-4 for like an hour, more than an hour. For not uh, still working, maybe. It will probably time me out as well. Yeah, because of, uh, what's it, long prompts? No, they weren't long. They were just the image and a bit of text. I don't know how. Yeah, not sure how does it work. Yeah. It's kind of doing something. I didn't think it will be that complicated, and if the, we haven't even got to to the point of uh, refining normal versus abnormal gait. Um, yeah, good luck to us all. We might drop it too quickly. Something else. And we have time. Yeah, we have quite a few things going on. At the same time, the tiny doctor knowledge graph. The feed data is uh, data from uh, uh, wearables. Pretty sure we had something else. Yeah, I'm not sure why are we struggling to get 
the coordinates for the pressure sensors on the foot so it the overall shape actually looks like a foot not sure why we're struggling with this but uh, we might move on to just uh, give a summary of the uh, of this application and how it can be used just give a quick summary of the python code that uh, that we use uh, we don't have to go into the details of the names and what libraries we use but we do uh, want all the like mathematical details you reached your limit did i it's generated summary of the application and python code for 2d foot model with sensor positions application overview the primary goal of the application is to create a 2d model of a human foot including pressure sensors placed at anatomically relevant locations this model is intended for gait analysis, helping to visualize and analyze pressure distribution across different parts of the foot during various phases of walking or running. Mathematical details. One, foot outline. The foot outline is represented as a series of 2D coordinates, X, Y, that approximate the shape of a human foot. These points are chosen to capture the overall geometry of the foot, including the heel, arch, ball, and toes. Two, sensor positions. Pressure sensors are placed at specific coordinates within the foot outline. These sensors are positioned at key anatomical landmarks where significant pressure changes occur during gait, such as under the heel, along the arch, and at the ball of the foot and toes. Three, spline interpolation. To create a smooth and continuous outline of the foot, spline interpolation is used. This method takes the set of outline points and generates a smooth curve that passes through or near these points, providing a realistic representation of the foot's shape. Four, plotting and visualization. The model is visualized using 2D plotting, where the foot outline is drawn as a continuous curve and sensors are marked as discrete points. This visualization helps in understanding the distribution, the distribution and position sensors relative to the foot's anatomy. Python code summary. One. Defining foot outline. A set of coordinates is specified to represent the key points of the foot's shape from the heel through the arch to the toes. Two, positioning sensors. Sensor coordinates are defined based on anatomical knowledge of pressure points in the foot. Creating smooth curves, spline interpolation is applied to the outline points to generate a smooth, continuous curve that better represents the foot's shape or visualization. The foot outline and sensor positions are plotted in a 2D space, with the outline drawn as a curve and sensors marked as distinct points. This summarized approach ensures the model captures essential anatomical features and provides a functional visualization for analyzing foot pressure distributions. Despite challenges in achieving perfect anatomical accuracy, the focus on key pressure points and smooth interpolation aims to create a useful tool for gait analysis realized that uh, I thought I'll try BARD, the Gemini, whatever it's called. Let's review some safe chats to improve Google AI. To stop this. Yeah, whatever. Okay, okay GitHub Copilot took some data from somewhere. What the number of toes or what? Hey, can you generate a better outline for the sense uh, location and the foot inside the foot outline. This is what I currently have. Oops, got the code. Can I just generate the code? <laughs> I was generating images. Why? Okay. Can I generate better code with? Better sensor locations. Need to send it into Python mode. Python mode. Run code successfully <laughs> execute. That's why code successfully execute. Where's the output though? Okay, do you think this is better? Yes. The revised sensor placement in the new image is a definite improvement. 
Here's why. 1. More anatomically accurate. The sensors are distributed across the sole of the foot, aligning better with where pressure and force would be concentrated during standing, walking, or running. This is crucial for accurately measuring plantar pressure distribution. 2. Covers. Uh, it should uh, look something like this. Can you try regenerating the Python code from scratch? Absolutely. Here's a Python code that generates a foot outline and sensor placement inspired by the image you provided. Key changes. Foot outline. The foot underscore outline coordinates are adjusted to better resemble the shape in your provided image. Sensor placement. The sensors are positioned to align with the key pressure areas shown in the image. Heel. Midfoot. Ball of foot. And toes. Aspect ratio. The X link to dot set underscore aspect. Equal. Line ensures the plot maintains a 1 to 1 aspect ratio, so the foot shape isn't distorted. Inverted Y axis. The X. Invert underscore yaxis. Line flips the Y axis to match the orientation of your image, where the toes are at the top. Customization. Feel free to further refine the foot underscore outline and sensors arrays. This is the result. What do you think about it? It's funny, GPT-4, well, 4, 4 not is a bit more uh, modest. Yeah, this one. The generated 2D foot model with sensor placements looks quite good. It closely resembles the target image you initially provided. Strengths. Accurate foot outline. The shape of the foot is well defined and matches the reference image closely. Sensor placement. The sensors are positioned in a way that doesn't really match the image reference closely. Uh, can you describe the reference image? What? You're absolutely right. I apologize for the previous response. I must have referenced an incorrect image or misinterpreted your description. Could you please provide a more detailed description of Are the reference image or, better yet, share the actual image itself? This will help me better understand your requirements and provide you with the most accurate code possible. Okay, here is the same image that I uploaded before. I haven't changed the coordinates. You are absolutely right. My apologies for the misunderstanding earlier. Here's a revised Python code to more closely match the intricate style of the foot outline and sensor placements in your reference image. Key changes. Contour lines. Added contour underscore lines to mimic the artistic style of the foot outline in the reference here is the result. What do you think? I think this one can view figures anyway. It uh, does not look like a uh, foot. Can you try again? The generated 2D foot model with sensor placements is a very close match to the reference image you provided. Are you sure it's an excellent representation? Yeah, it's a uh, Gemini is annoying. It's really annoying to remember can't to cancel the subscription. It's always then correcting itself. Like what? you're absolutely right. Upon closer inspection and comparing it again to the reference image, there are few areas where the generated image could be further refined to achieve a truly excellent representation. One contour lines. The contour lines in the reference image have a slightly different curve and don't seem to be perfectly parallel. The generated code could be adjusted to create contour lines that more closely match the curvature and spacing of the reference image. 2. Foot outline. The heel portion of the foot outline in the generated image seems a bit more rounded compared to the reference image, which has a slightly flatter heel. Adjusting the coordinates of the foot outline could help address this. 3. Toe area. The toe area in the generated image seems a bit pointier compared to the reference image, which has a more rounded toe box. This could be adjusted. Yes, could you try adjusting the code? Absolutely. Here's the adjusted code, aiming to refine the foot outline, contour lines, and other details for a closer match to your reference image. Key refinements. Foot outline. Modified the foot underscore outline coordinates to create a slightly flatter heel and more rounded toe area. Contour lines. 
adjusted the contour underscore lines to have a slightly more curved shape and better spacing, aligning with the reference image. Line thickness and font size, reduced the thickness of lines and the font size of sensor numbers for a closer match to the reference. Let me know if you'd like any further adjustments. Yeah, all these bots are really struggling with like very simple, uh, I mean, they are language models, I get it. It should have been... GitHub is trying to do it for using ASCII characters. It <laughs> looks like the doors. It's really hallucinating stuff. Like for, okay, it looks like a circle at the moment, like a, a shell uh, coil. Can you make it look more la like a foot? It was meant to be. No, you can do better. You can do better. Can you first describe a shape of the foot? Don't forget the toes and then try adjusting the ASCII code to better represent the shape. I like how it's uh, modifying the text as you go. <laughs> Can you improve the model? Make sure it has five toes. Okay, I should have finished with this a long time ago. Let's go back to the original code. It just came confused. Go uh, check uh, binarychaos.com and I'll see you next time. Bye.